Hello, and welcome to the Brooklyn Friends School eNews Podcast. I'm your host, Andy Cohen. On today's show, we will be taking a look at the Model UN Club, which is part of the student-led activities here at Brooklyn Friends School. In the studio, we'll be speaking with one of the team members. And later in the show, our field reporter, Paul Romano, will be speaking with the head coach of the Model UN team, Vladimir Malyukov. But first, let us talk with Emmett Sklar. Uh, you are uh, class of 17, so you'll be graduating this year, hopefully. Hopefully. You, you think yeah. you got that all lined up? I think so. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> That's good. And uh, Emmett has been involved with the Model UN uh, mm-hmm. Club, which is also a student-led activity in SLA, since the ninth grade. That's mm-hmm. correct? Yes. And so uh, he's here to tell us all about what the Model UN is. It's it's sort of like a team, isn't it? It's like an mm-hmm. academic team. I would say it's more a team than a club because we go to all these conferences. Each year we go to about four or five a year. And we take a select group from the SLA itself, which is more club focused and focused on learning and international affairs. And we bring it into a competitive setting with a bunch of other schools and people from around the world, around the country, and even around Brooklyn, other schools that are more local like that. Mm-hmm. And so these are, do they call them meets? Uh, right? Conferences. They, they call them conferences. Yeah. And so you have two coming up. You have one this mm-hmm. Thursday at Columbia, yes. is that correct? Mm-hmm. And then you'll have another one coming up in two weeks mm-hmm. at uh, University of Pennsylvania. Yes. That should be exciting. So how many teams compete in these competitions? Um, it can range, but generally there's around 3,000 kids, so over 100 schools. And as I said, those are from different Uh, communities and countries and it's a great experience because you get to meet a lot of people who aren't from the same background as you I remember my last conference I met a kid from Venezuela and I got to talk to him about what's going on there and I once met a kid from um, the country of Georgia and his father worked in the government there so I got to talk to him about that and that's one of the great experiences of Model UN Wow so how does it work so you're you're a team and then you mm-hmm. get instructions and you prepare for this and yes. how, do, so, how does that work so every time about a month before each conference we get what are called assignments and that's telling us what country we are and then what different committees we have delegates on and so every person is going to represent the same country but they're going to be on different committees and those committees discuss different issues and that can range from uh, human rights violations to the workforce to youth issues pretty much anything that's going on in the world right now and people will sometimes be in Paris they'll sometimes be alone and then on the other hand we have alternate assignments where people are representing actually other people and not countries and those are more specific to cabinet level governments that sort of thing Mm -hmm. and so what's happening in this next Mm -hmm. event well at columbia yeah what have you guys been assigned so we've been assigned a couple different positions one person is doing a summit on global warming and they're representing the maldives which is pretty cool i'm personally doing a historical committee so it's actually set in the past in the 1950s on the United Arab Republic, which was like a conglomerate of Egypt and Syria when they combined. And so that's based in the past. Uh, Sophia is doing one on Julius Caesar in Rome. That's historical as well. And so that's going to be a lot of fun because we get to go in in smaller committees and you discuss issues that were talked about maybe 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago. The cool, neat thing about that is that you still get to practice these sort of soft skills of teamwork and negotiating and all that sort of thing. Right. And so the ultimate goal is mm. to for the team is to do what? Well, I'd say there's, there's different goals for people individually and uh, the team itself. The team's goal is to go there and win awards and have fun and to teach people a lot of lessons about international affairs and diplomacy and how that all works and even potentially prepare people for, for a job or something that they might be interested in in college. And I know a lot of people who come out of Model UN go into college and end up studying international affairs or political science, and this helps them a lot. For people's personal goals, I think it is to improve as a public speaker and a negotiator and just as a person and to meet all these people, but also, of course, to be competitive, to to go there and win awards, which is why it's a team, I guess. Mm-hmm. Wow, that sounds terrific. And so I have to ask you this question. What is the strangest thing you've ever seen in a Model UN competition? Mm-hmm. 
Well, I know people like to bring props a lot of times, depending on what country or person they are. So kids in the past have I've seen. I think the funniest one was a brick uh, um, that was brought to committee. But it could range from anything, people bringing symbols of their country, whether it's flags or that sort of thing, like giant five-foot flags they drape over their seats or different holy books, that sort of thing. It could range. Oh, okay. Can you tell us a little bit about the um, your coach? Sure. Vlad is our main coach, and DeGraff also helps out with logistics and that sort of thing. And Gra- Vlad is great because not only does he help us organize and plan things, and he's helping us organize the conference that we're actually hosting in the uh, in May, I think, in spring. But he's also just a good leader in general for the kids. He helps them uh, with like research and information if they need that sort of thing. And he's generally someone who's always there for the kids and the team if they need him. And someone who's just very, very helpful. Yes. Well, I wish you all the success in the world. Thank and you. Uh, bring home the glory to Brooklyn Friends. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the Thank show. Thank you. And now, Paul Romano's report. Okay, Vlad. Hi. How are you? Fine, how are you? Andy sent me (laughs) over here to ask you about Model UN. Oh, cool. Except I found out from Andy, we were talking, and he was telling me about the 2003 championship basketball team. (laughs) And I found that topic more interesting. What can you tell me about that experience? Well, it was one of the culminating experiences of my life. As I told the boys, I said, now I can die in peace. I saw it's the video. Re- it's a really amazing um, event for me, being a, a frustrated uh, sports player in high school. I played in many teams that had done very well, and as soon as I joined the varsity, uh, we did worse. Football, <laughs> basketball, and a sport called crew. So, uh, you know, it was really an example of where you could see that... Uh, even though I, you know, I wanted, saw myself as a good coach, I, I just realized I had a group of players that were totally self-motivated, and I said to let them go a bit, let them play, and uh, that's what they did. So it was a really... Um, you guys went all the way. And the wild thing was, up to a week before we played poly prep, if you had asked me the Friday before we played... The, the one week earlier, I would say this has overall been a disappointing season. We lost two games we should have won that year. Uh, I didn't think we were quite playing up to our potential. Then something happened. Everything just sort of turned around. And uh, we won the semifinal of our league tournament. It was almost on Monday. Wednesday we beat Packer to win the tournament, uh, our league tournament. Then we beat, we were ranked fifth for the prep schools. We beat called Collegiate. Right. And then the next day, one week later, after we lost them by 20 points, we played Poly Prep with Joachim Nolan and beat him by eight points. Wow. At Poly Prep. This was 15 years ago now. No. It's 2014. 14, about 14. Yeah. Years. And then we beat Horace Mann in the final on Sunday. And then we had a couple of weeks off when we went up, when we went up in the States. Wow. So it was a fantastic uh, experience for me and for the boys. Good day. When you're leading Model UN, yeah, do you use some of the same strategies? No, you use? no, no. But uh, there's one similar point. Model UN is I spend a lot of more, much more time getting them prepared. But I find the less I do, the better they do. And we have people like Emmett, Sophia, and Miles, uh, who have really just taken the bull by the horns, and they do the work. They really get them ready. And it's really based upon students being interested themselves. It shouldn't be a reflection of my... Some problems that, coach, that you see similarly is uh, in coaching, and, and I, sometimes I think it's maybe it's an excuse, but coaching or running Model UN is that it becomes an extension of your own ego. Mm-hmm. And you have to, you know, you want to avoid that. To be honest, I want them to do it because it's a way to get involved and get interested in things. But when I think back in high school, I probably wouldn't have liked being in Model UN myself. Okay. Because it really requires a lot of concentration and, and a real... Self-motivation. Yeah. Well, the self-motivation I had, 
but I wouldn't have liked just arguing for the sake of arguing. Right, right. And there's a lot of that in Model UN. And uh, Do you do any coaching at all? Sure. I mean, the students come to see me about, you know, questions they have about policy or the history, and I can help out there. And when you do this coaching, do you use any of the basketball terminology? Does it come up? Like no. uh, full court press? <laughs> No, because I've had very competitive people, more competitive than me in the past. Uh, Emmett, to some degree, but much more uh, Otis Hatfield and uh, the great Abraham uh, Axeman, who were extremely competitive and driven. Emmett is too, and so Sophia. Emmett, Miles is more laid back. He works very hard, but he's more laid back, his personality. Okay. Yeah, so I don't have to do that, no. In fact, I'm the one who's saying, you should just be interested in it and uh, go have fun. <laughs> the ones who really push the winning are the uh, students. Are you going to win? Uh, I think Emmett's in the ad hoc committee, so he is in one that's very, um, that's by invitation only. That's extremely competitive. Abraham Axler won it the year he was chosen, um, but it's the best people in the school. So I don't know. The fact that he was invited is important. I think Sophia will do very well. Emmett's got a good shot. Isaac Handy. Alyssa and our big two rookies of the year, Mary Parasol and Alyssa Williams, will be there. So, One final question. Sure. Do you stretch or run suicides before Model UN? I wish I could. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> Thank you, Vlad. Thank you, Emmett. And Paul, when you get back to the studio, let's have a little chat. But to end today's show uh, with a little pick-me-up, how about a three-point shot at the buzzer from our girls' varsity basketball team? Yeah. Oh, And as always, remember to let your life speak.